Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of Inside Out Electronics and we have something new today on the bench. This is a tiny mighty ESP32 development board called Tiny Pico. I was really excited to get something of ESP32 on my hands, in my hands to actually play with and this is, believe it or not, very first one ESP32 based development board I ever touched. So. This is a super important day for me today and if you are not familiar with this tiny Pico uh, development board that will be a very interesting day for you, I hope, as well. So, let's take a look what is what is that. So, it came from Adafruit, as you see, their logo and a very nice um, pinout diagram over here and it's this is how it's packaged and it costs 20 American dollars. It is ESP32 development board and it's nice and compact. This is why I choose this one. And uh, let's take a look what it comes with. So very simple and straightforward packaging. There's some whole bunch of little thingies falling out of this little package. And obviously the diagram, which one you just saw. So, well, and also it's gonna help me with my uh, video because because this little piece of paper contains actually everything that uh, I need to talk about. So, this is 32-bit dual-core 240 megahertz processor, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, uh, BGN, Bluetooth, low energy 4.2, 4 megabyte SPI flash, 4 megabyte extra PS RAM, and the P stands for persistent S RAM, I guess. Uh, RGB LED, APA 102, uh, not familiar with that. USB plus serial URT for programming. A 700 mA 3.3 volt uh, low drop out regulator, LiPo battery management, LiPo, optimized power pass, blah blah blah, JST pass for the back support and micro, whatever it is, 14 GPIOs uh, and breadboard friendly. Obviously they know to check your battery polarity, like it's very important for any other product. On the other side we have very nice pinout diagram. This is really cool. I wish every dev board would come with one like that. This is like it just yeah, I would laminate it. That's so cool. Okay, apparently this we're not supposed to eat. Like we're not gonna eat it. We're gonna just put it aside. Okie dokie. So now it's not just a little board here, which is obviously the most interesting thing to me over here. This little tiny cool looking board. Uh, this is also come it also comes with uh, headers. Okay, those are straight breadboard compatible headers, but these are, I'm so excited about, because they are obviously breadboard compatible, but they also like dual sided, so one side you can just plug into breadboard, another side you can still poke just straight from here, right, you not, don't have to use breadboard, so this is cool, I like this one. Um, also, they come with two tiny JST connectors, not sure if these are just... Uh, where are they supposed to go? Or are we gonna talk about this later? I don't know. Okay, clearly this goes here or this goes here, I assume. So these are two different type of battery terminals. So you can connect either this one or that one. That's I'm uh, that's my assumption because there is no any nowhere else you can solder those two SMD uh, connectors, right? So that's where it's supposed to go. And there is a polarity over here, so that's the only thing I would think they are be they can be used for. So I'm not sure if this little guy, oh yeah, this maybe even have uh, two uh, soldering pots on both sides. I'm curious if you have to do, um, you can just use a soldering iron, you have to do something like uh, uh, reflow with your soldering paste. But I, 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 for my particular case, this is not important, fortunately, or fortunately. So cool, the, the, the already, the, the packaging is even, um, even cool whatever is included so but let's go to the the business end over here we have this cool tiny actually pretty tiny board it contains the processor 
contains, I guess this is PS RAM and I don't know what the hell is this maybe it's a serial to USB, uh, yeah, USB device um, I will take a look closer and we discuss it so this is the, the close-up view of Tiny Pico. So let's take a look in details what do we have here. As we see there's a whole bunch of nice goodness straight on the top of the board and the back side is completely flat. So if you love flat boards this is for you. There is no any elements gonna protrude except maybe your pin headers if you decided to do that. Alright, so let's start from this end. So we have here a... A 3D antenna. I'm not really familiar with 3D antennas, how they work, but apparently it's recent uh, stuff. Um, so it's supposed to be able to have a better reception, I, I assume. Transmission, reception, uh, quality of signal. We have RGB LED, we have reset button, and we have core of the operation is ASP32 processor, dual core to 40 MHz and yada yada yada, good stuff. Oh, by the way, I don't see external oscillator, at least not obviously see it, I think it's internal. Uh, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. And this guy have also 4 MB of SPI, SPI flash, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, everything in there. I assume this antenna is used for both, because I don't think I see any kind of antenna business on backhand here like you know PCB antenna and stuff right then then we have this PS RAM uh, 4 megabytes of PS RAM or megabits I think those are for megabit of PS RAM uh, which end up 512 megabyte of RAM, PS RAM then we have onboard, I was right, onboard USB UART uh, um, I think this is uh, I don't know whose chip is that. It's called CP2104, so yeah. Uh, so, so, so over here we have battery management. So this chip will be responsible for charging uh, your batteries. Pretty cool. Then we have 3.3 volt regulator. This little teeny tiny jobby over here, which is barely visible even for my for myself, I'm not talking about like looking it through the camera, but maybe you you will up you will up seeing it better. A little LED over here, um, it's red and orange. Uh, sorry, actually two LEDs. One is battery, another is power. So yeah, that's cool. And micro USB. It's kind of sucks. This is micro USB power. It doesn't. No, it's no big deal for me. But I would. It would be so nice. It will be like um, USB C. But hey. Eh, Micro USB is good too. So let's take a look on the back side. There is a lot of going on here. Ha, I tricked you. There is nothing going on here except very nice uh, labeling of the pins. Like ground reset, whole bunch of pins. Uh, battery ground 5 volt, 3.3 volt. This is probably 5 volt in, I assume. And so forth. But uh, in order to be uh, more precise, we can just pull this little sheet and put our tiny picker right here. Okay, by the way, on the photos, another fruit, this antenna that what we have here looks a wee bit different. So, oops, uh, so I assume some things going to ch keep changing a lot as, as we go because they, you know, getting in, improved and things like that, or cost improved, who knows, right? So, uh, RTC, yeah, th does it have real time clock? It would be amazing if this thing has real-time clock, so I have to take a look, but if it has real-time clock as well, like inside the chip, it will be like amazing. Uh, so... So this has some DAC, ADC, I don't know what RTC stands for. Uh, real-time something? Who knows? Uh, okay. In-out 5 volt, in-out 3 volt, ground, battery. I know what that really is supposed to mean. Approximate battery voltage charging state. Yeah, that's just hoop. Not sure what that's really supposed to mean. Oh, unless it's uh, it's it's connected with the 
the battery terminals on the back and you're gonna have some voltage and you can hook it up to one of those ADC pins and you would be able to read battery voltage I don't know but you probably no forget what I'm talking about I don't think you can because these pins are 3 volt uh, tolerable 3 volt logic you can't just like walk like 7 volts in or whatever 4.7 volts in there so there's a whole bunch of digital and IO pins SDICL um, so we have here I square C we have SPI and we have even touch TH I assume those are touch pins and more analog to digital conversion pins analog pins essentially and I need to figure out what are those, what are those RTC um, what are those I don't know and where what that really refers to APA 102 GPA IO yeah I don't know what that really what is talking about like where is it yeah I'm not sure what this little thing about doesn't say but even even that, like there is no any pin out breakdowns on the bottom here, right? So who knows? Who knows? So so far, this is really really uh, looking good, really looking good. There's, there's no any sensors in here, so this particular board is good for something that you can control externally. Uh, it doesn't have any logic inside, so like uh, yeah. But what else this is uh, this thing can do? So the programming languages it supports MicroPython infrastructure, Expressive IDF, and Arduino IDE. Honestly, I never worked with Expressive Expressive IDF. Don't know what is this, so I can't really comment on that. But for me, the main focus is Arduino IDE, and if it works with Arduino IDE, this is perfect so um, I really love to develop in developing stuff using C++ I assume it's as perceived ID something like that but I must be mistaken let me take a look so what would you need in order to connect to the computer and start developing well apparently you would need to install um, uh, drivers from silicon labs so this little chip um, is come from silicon labs and cp2104 and you need to get the latest driver from your c lab cp2104 chip so you just install it on your system whatever it is like windows or unix Ubuntu for example mm, probably Mac I actually haven't played with Mac so I don't know what kind of drivers where you get them probably the same place but some of those uh, platforms like for example Ubuntu is really good and sometimes it just doesn't need drivers as long as the device adhere to some URT protocol it's just gonna just work um, but for Windows most time you need to have a driver so then um, there is a detailed explanation of how to connect each um, how to use and set up each of the platform this thing supports like uh, MicroPython, Expressive IDF or Arduino and uh, you have to follow the each individual guide in this case I haven't actually tried that I will I will pause probably right now and try to connect to Arduino uh, IDE and take a look what is Expressive IDF and if I have any like um, hiccups I will uh, tell you in that video after uh, I figure this out so at this moment I'm gonna pause and take a look on IDEs so I had uh, a chance to play a little bit with this um, tiny Pico ESP32 development board and I install uh, my Arduino IDE and install all necessary uh, library packages for it and it turned out to be very very easy also I had a chance to take a look at this expressive IDF which turned out to be not exactly what I thought it is. I thought it's like a C++ development platform. Turned out to be it's a Python based developer development uh, platform uh, and the framework I would say. A, and it's also a Python based and it's command line based. So it's not, I don't have any issues with command line. I do not uh, really uh, like Python per se. It's my uh, honest opinion. So MicroPython and I specific IDF not gonna work for me. But 
Arduino ID because it's C++ based I would prefer uh, but technically I don't know um, for example capability differences so if for example uh, Expressive IDF and MicroPython gives me more flexibility give me more library and support I would probably use them so it doesn't matter if I won't be able to achieve my goals using Arduino ID because not enough libraries or something is not available I don't know which one has uh, better support and um, community adoption uh, so if for example one of them has better support more libraries and better community adoption I would employ that for my project so I already programmed some really basic example which essentially is the same which uh, it's programmed uh, already and here we are using my little power bank powering a powering I say yes it's blinking so it's just blinking LED uh, nothing really special not using any Wi-Fi whatever Bluetooth thing it's just blinking LED blinking also this two guys so this is actually it at the moment uh, looking forward to make any cool project I have few already in my mind um, uh, with this little device because what's cool about it that you have Wi-Fi connectivity so you can report and or control a this device that I'm planning to build using this tiny Pico ASP32 development board um, uh, completely remotely like from any part of the world I think I hope I hope you were able to connect my for example Android application a to this device via Wi-Fi so yeah so I'm gonna wrap up I think this is really really cool tiny development board because it's very small sometimes size is matter and uh, um, it's also low power and it's very compact and has uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth lots of tons of memory tons of uh, flash all what you need for so thank you guys for watching i hope you like this sort of um quick reviews of development boards i really happy every time i receive any kind of development board to share with you stay tuned for another episode of inside out electronic see you next time